This is chapter number five, the age of industrialization. Hand labor and steam power. So let me just first tell you about the summary. That is the importance of hand labor. Introduction of uh, machines required large capital investment. Therefore, the cheap labor was preferred over the use of machines. And manual labor was also preferred in the industries where production fluctuated with the seasons. So, goods with intricate design and specific shapes were in great demand in the European markets. And this was possible only with hand labor and not machine outputs. Also, the aristocrats. And the bro, that is the Victorian, Britain and big people, they preferred the refined and carefully handmade products. Machine made goods were for the colony people. So let me take you to the detail of this, that is Victorian Britain. So what does this Victorian Britain means? When Queen Victoria was the queen was a ruler you can say so from uh, 1837 to 1901 the period is called as victorian victorian britain so here as i just said that uh, the machine were introduced and because of the machine being introduced still the machines were not being used so much cheap labor was preferred over the use of machines because there were plenty of labor the wages were low then coming to the seasonal job manual labors were preferred in the industries where the production fluctuated with the seasons if you see that certain for example if you take christmas so only before the christmas the binding printers they require the labor otherwise they were just doing the nothing that is why the industrialists usually preferred hand labor and employing workers for the season so this is a picture here is a picture of people on the move because all were searching for some or the other work one more thing was the products there are certain products which can only be made by hand labor everything cannot be made by machines and machines can only make make many things means one thing many time right one thing many time but if you want some intricate design some special designs and some special shapes then hand labor was required i will give an example that in britain at that time in mid 19th century 500 varieties of hammer see 500 varieties of hammer and 45 kind of axes were made and they required skill human hand skill not the mechanical technology at that time if you see this picture worker in an iron works so these worker were being idolized they were shown as uh, the you know they were suffering hardship and pain and for the nation for the cause of no nation for the country they were doing this this is what is being shown in the pictures again in uh, that period victorian britain the upper class as i said that the upper class the arist aristocrat and bureau that is bureau uh, this uh, they means below bureau means uh, people with finesse and class so they wanted things or they wanted things which are quite refined and they have a class so they needed things made by hand that is hand labor and the machine made goods were for whom for export to the colonies so this question may be asked that the machine made goods at uh, victorian britain british time for this was made for whom and this was this was made for the colonies so uh, you know in britain because there were no shortage of uh, human hands if you talk about america they have they were using machines because the labor were less, were less there 
the life of the workers. So let me tell you the summary first. That large scale migration to towns and cities from countryside in search of jobs were seen at that time. And many job seekers had to wait weeks spending nights and under bridges or in night shelters. So workers become jobless after the busy season of work if it got over. And some returned to the countryside when the demand of labor in the rural areas they opened up. And they, you know, mostly people look for odd jobs which till the mid 19th century were difficult to find. And the fear of unemployment made workers hostile to the introduction of new technology, new machines. So women, uh, women who survived on hand spinning, they started or they began protesting when the spinning jenny was introduced. So that, as I just said that because labor was too much, life of the workers were what? We need to understand what was the life of the workers. If you see, this is a picture of houseless, houseless and hungry people. They are kids, they are women, they are just waiting because Britain is very cold. Britain is a British uh, people, you know, they live in very hostile condition as far as the seasons are concerned. It's too cold there most of the year. So, but the workers were there and they were, it was very difficult for them to find the job. They need to, they have to spend the nights under these bridges and, and also uh, in night shelters. They also take refuge, some night refuge, some were private, some were maintained by the government. Season also, because season, once uh, the season was over, they only get a job in a season. Once they the job is over, they again come back to the streets. So it, it was very difficult job, you know, they just do some odd job at that time. And if you see here, Spinning Jenny was introduced. I'll just talk about this. But before that, one more thing need to be understood that by the early 19th century, it was indeed that the salary, money or the wages were increasing. But if the money is increasing, you cannot say that the worker level was also increasing. If you go back to the Napoleonic War, if you see, that the people were getting money but the inflation was quite high. That means the prices of commodities were very high. So if they were getting say $100, uh, I am just taking an example, $100 and uh, previously they were making their ends meet by say spending $80. But now if they are getting $120, the commodities are coming in $170 or $180. So they are not able to Cope up with that. So this has to be understood if you see that like the 1830s, the proportion of uh, unemployment, it went to, to between 35 to 75 percent in different regions of this place which we are talking about. So 10 percent of the urban population in the mid century, mid 19th century were extremely poor, extremely poor. And then this spinning jenny came. Spinning jenny it was devised by James Hargreaves. James Hargreaves in 1764. So you have to learn this. The spinning jenny was devised by or is being made by or invented by you can say by James Hargreaves in 1764. And this machine was speeding up the process. That is machine speeded up the process of spinning. And also it reduced the labor demand. That is by just turning one single wheel or a worker, just a single worker could set up a motion, in motion a number of spindles and spin several threads at the same time. So this spinning jenny because employ, unemployment was there, fear of unemployment was there. So, you know, people also started attacking these new machines, mostly women. Mostly women did that. So this is a picture of a shallow underground railway being constructed in central London, so people started getting job how? By the 1840s, the cities were being, uh, being made, that is building activity was going on. So roads were widened, new railway stations came up, railway lines, tunnel being dug, drainage and sewers laid, rivers being embanked. That is how people, they got job. 
so the number of workers employed in just transport industry if you take an example it it doubled in 1840s and again doubled that is it becomes become this double of the double in uh, again next coming 30 years so these were the life of uh, the the place or you can say the people who were there as laborers now coming to the industrialization in the colonies let me just give you an idea of the age of indian textile then when we then we go to the details so the age of indian textiles before before the you can say uh, age of machine silk silk and cotton goods from india dominated the international textile market armenian and persian merchants they could they took jobs or uh, you know goods or stuffs from punjab to afghanistan eastern persia and uh, central asia surat on gujarat coast connected india to the gulf and the red sea ports and masuli patnam on the koromandal coast and hugli in bengal had trade links with the south asian southeast asian ports so a variety of indian merchants and traders were involved in this network of export trading uh, financing production carrying goods and supplying exporters so they gave advances to the weavers procured the woven cloth from weaving villages and carried the supply to the ports the european companies gradually gained power and monopoly rights and trade through the new ports of calcutta now kolkata and mumbai came to be controlled by the european companies so this is what happened so as i said that uh, before the age of machines that is industrialization etc silk and cotton from india they dominated the textile market and these were going from various you know people were taking the merchants like armenian and persian they were taking the goods from punjab to afghanistan eastern persia and, and central asia and various uh, mountain passes and uh, deserts were used as the path also the sea trade was also going on operated through the main pre colonial ports this is very important to understand that this surat surat we are talking about in gujarat and masuli patnam these are the pre colonial ports means before the british people actually got hold of our country and let me show you so this is the indian this is the place we are talking about uh, the masuli patnam in the koromandal koromandal coast and hugli in bengal they were trading with southeast uh, southeast asian ports whereas the gujarat here is we have gujarat this this is the gujarat area so surat was there and this this uh, was connected to the gulf and red sea ports so these are the places where the pre colonial you can say trade was going on and the variety of indian merchants means the indian traders and merchants they were also a part of this trade they were financing the production also this carrying the goods and also supplying the exporters they they would give advances that is money in uh, in prior to viewers they would procure the woven cloth from the viewing village they proper go to the village and take out take out the cloth and then they would supply to the port and the negotiation after the negotiation they they finally it goes out for the export but uh, by the 1750s the previous uh, trade which was controlled mainly by the indian merchants this was breaking down because the european companies were gaining power they were gaining power first they just secured some concessions from the local you can say rulers or courts and then they got the monopoly rights to trade for a particular trade they got the monopoly and after that the surat and hugli these ports just got declined and after that what happened surat and masuli patnam they lost their their uh, you can say the charm and the number says that that 
16 million it was being you know say trading was going on at surat by 1740s it just got down to 3 million so this is what happened to surat and other ports which were pre colonial and held by indian indian merchants but uh, while this surat and hugli was decaying or they were losing their charm for trading because colonial people were there now bombay and calcutta they grew they grew and these ports these oh, these ports were held by european companies and the ships were also the european ones and this is how the old trading collapsed and the network also you know it collapsed and finally it was taken over by the european companies you can say now the question arises but let me show you the picture this is the english factory of a surat this is a 17th century drawing but we need to understand that okay this was going on this is about the trading but what was going on with the artisans the people the the viewer actually so the viewers what happened to viewers let me just give you an idea about them first the east india company gained monopoly rights over the indian textile trade it tried to eliminate the existing traders and brokers connected with the cloth trade and established direct control over the viewers the paid servant called the gumashta was appointed for supervising viewers collecting supply and examining the quality of cloth the company prevented the viewers from dealing with other buyers so once the order was placed the viewers were given loans for purchasing raw materials for the production and the produced cloth was to be handed over to whom gumashta the new gumashta had no social link with the village they acted arrogantly marched into village with sepoys and peons and punished viewers for delays in the supply and the price received by viewers from the company was miserably low it was very it was very low and the loans that they had accepted they tied them to the company so in carnatic and bengal viewers uh, they actually the you know they deserted the village and they just migrated and viewers began refusing loans also and closing down their workshops and taking to the agriculture labor so what we want to highlight here is that now the east company east india company the british company it got hold over the textile exports now so the uh, textile exports declined initially they they wanted see textile exports were very good in india but east india company they don't want to decline they don't want to uh, do it because it was in their favor or their profit to still expand the textile exports from india so what they did this uh, as i said before the political power they didn't have bengal and carnatic carnatic as their power they didn't had those places so they had all the problems of getting the regular supply also the french the portuguese they were also in the trading uh, business at that time so this is how they they were you know they were finding some problem but when east india company got hold of this these two areas they got monopoly or they got monopoly uh, right to trade now so they don't want to uh, directly control or in between people like the merchants traders all these they don't want they did what they directly tried to target the people or the viewers who are making it they just try to eliminate the traders and brokers and they just try to establish a direct link with the viewer for that they appointed certain people who or you can say play paid servant they were called as gumashtas what is the work of gumashtas they will supervise the viewers they will collect the supplies and they will examine the quality of cloth right so what are the steps they took we are taking that means how did they they actually got hold of these business first is they appointed gumashta and then 
they were giving advances they were giving advances to the viewers now the viewers they were generally poor they were getting advances and they are making product they are they were getting the raw materials also so when they are they were getting all these they the gumashta those the person who came there he actually took uh, control of various things and because the loan was already given the viewers were actually tied they cannot sell their content or whatever they have made to any other because they were getting raw materials on money also from companies and gumashta were, were people who are taking care of they were supervising things but the problem was that the gumashtas were not from the they were not having they were not from the they were just paid servants like like uh, some they're doing some job so they were not from the villages those traders and uh, you know brokers which we talked about they were they were from the villages from where this weaver belong so they will uh, in bad times and good times they will they were with these viewers or the village people but the gumashtas were something different they if the work is not done properly they will come and they will beat them they will beat and flog them see this is written here and they they means there was not there was not a good relationship between the gumashtas and the viewers or people who are in this textile business in the village so sipahi means sipahi it's like you know sipahi the british pronoun sipahi is sipahi so there were as we said that this was going on people now they were getting very less wage amount the the final product which they give back to the company or the gumashtas the amount they were getting was very less and it was very difficult for them to make their end meet so they just you know uh, stopped living in that uh, village and they just left the village and they took to the agricultural labor this is what they did but now in the by the turn of 19th century cotton weavers they were facing new set of problems what are these problems let us understand manchester comes to india what is what does this this mean this is this is what happened here the in 1772 henry patulo he said that indian textile is so good the demand is so high that it is no never this export of indian textile it is never going to decline or reduce but if you see in the beginning of 19th century there was a decline of textile exports from india if i give give you the numbers the number says that in 1811 to 12 that is in this uh, two years the peas goods accounted for 33% of indian exports and by 1850 to 51 it got down to 3% so this what happened someone said that it is not get not it is never going to decline but it happened so the question arises is why does this happen what are the implication why does this happen the thing was british textile in india or you can say the manchester manchester comes to india so let me give you an idea about this first is the british uh, industrialist they pressurized the government they pressurized the government and why they pressurized the government to impose duties on cotton textiles so that manchester goods sell in britain without any outside competition first thing is this then the industrialized also persuaded the east india company for selling the british manufacturers or manufacturers what is being produced in britain should be uh, sent to indian markets and the exports of british cotton goods increased dramatically in the early 19th century the export market of the indian cotton weavers collapsed and the local market shrank being glutted with cheap manchester imports so the viewers could not get sufficient supply of good quality raw cotton 
and viewers in india were starved of supplies and forced to buy raw cotton at very high prices exorbitant prices and by the end of 19th century factories in india began production flooding the market with machine made goods and that is how the viewing industry ultimately decayed and died so this is what happened first of all why british uh, or you can say british export or indian textile export declined first of all the the industrial or industries when it, it came up in england the lobby they pressurized the government of uh, britain to stop the cotton import from india and also they said that okay whatever whatever is being produced here should be they pressurized east india company also that whatever is being produced here you should send it or uh, make india as the market there was if you see virtually at the end of 18th century there had been virtually no import of cotton piece goods into india if i take the number by 1850 cotton piece goods constituted 31% of indian imports but by the 1870s this was over 50% now there was one more problem as i just uh, you know indicated that because it, because uh, things were coming from manchester or england and uh, these imports were cheap also and uh, the quality wa- quality was also good so the indian viewers could not compete with them they could not compete with them by 1860s again there was another problem that they were not getting enough, su- enough supply of the raw material that is viewers who were who were making these uh, say the final the initial things for the final cloth they were not getting what they were not getting the enough uh, supply of uh, the cotton raw cotton why because civil war broke out and cotton supplies from the us were cut off so britain did what britain wanted britain was not getting the the raw material from uh, us so britain started getting the raw materials from india so when india was sending all the raw materials the cost or the price of raw material raw cotton in india or in our region it got very higher so this viewer cannot pay that they have to buy it for very very higher prices very higher prices then the indian also indian uh, industries also started production and then these uh, you know machine goods were being were being all over uh, flooding the market you can say so the viewing is at that time become very different or very difficult so this is a picture showing the bombay harbor the late century drawing is there so this is all we discussed we will take one more discussion in the in a short while till then thank you so much take care of yourself